This is X Wallkill Bethelite here, and I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the uh, culture shock that I went through when I was uh, basically put out of Bethel or laid off. Uh, the only thing I can really compare it to, and it would be hard for me to really even compare it to that, is uh, someone who had been into uh, prison for years and then leaving uh, going out of, into society now I haven't been in prison but uh, I remember when I had to uh, stay with the worldly relatives uh, they couldn't comprehend uh, some of the things that I was experiencing uh, for example how happy I was just to have a room all to myself. I mean, I was extremely happy just to have my own room. Uh, because at Bethel, like people were pretty much everywhere. Um, I would go up on the roof of one of the residence buildings uh, just to try to find a place to kind of gather my thoughts uh, you know, have a little bit of alone time, do a little uh, prayer and uh, have a little bit of quiet before my day got started. And uh, of course, I get on the elevator, uh, go to the roof of the building. And uh, apparently other people had the same idea uh, that I had because there were always other people there. Uh, there was a few spots I remember trying to uh, get a little alone time at uh, and this is outdoors and there were people there uh, probably again trying to find a spot where they could be alone for a little while and uh, you know personal time was really really hard uh, to come by at Bethel so when I actually had a room all to myself I just, you know, it, it was just great to me. And it wasn't like it was the nicest room in the world, which is probably what they're thinking. Like I'm in a suite somewhere or something. But to me, it was uh, amazing to have that. And I remember uh, just laying on the bed uh, and looking at the ceiling, uh, just enjoying the quiet just enjoying some uh, peace and quiet for the first time in years. I didn't hear a sound when I didn't want to because I couldn't even go to the library to get peace and quiet. I would go to the library. Uh, there were several libraries. I remember the library in the E-Residence at Walk Hill, uh, I really liked that library. It had a very nice view. I would go there to do some studying and research. Sit down in one of the chairs right by the window. Perfect view. Get ready to do some research. And sure enough, somebody comes in the library. Oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. Now, they're not necessarily talking to me, but they'd always be someone talking loud in the library oh i haven't seen you in a long time where have you been and yada 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 oh we got to get together let's go do this that or the other loud as all get out and you're in the library trying to prepare for a meeting or you know just trying to do some personal study and uh to actually have a room to myself where i could have quiet whenever i wanted i mean that was amazing to me and uh, I remember uh, going to sleep and I would wake up at about 5.30 and just jump out of bed and start looking for my things trying to get ready for morning worship and eventually you know as I came to my senses I would realize where I was <laughs> wasn't at Bethel and uh, I would just sit down uh, read my text, maybe do a little bit of Bible reading and uh, kind of wonder what they were, you know, 
uh, doing at Bethel, uh, what morning worship was about. And then I'd actually go back to sleep, which is something that I wasn't accustomed to. My body uh, was just not used to being fully rested. To actually not be tired was a foreign concept to me. I'm used to going out to my meeting, which is 45 minutes to an hour away, staying, uh, handling my assignments there, which of course you're not leaving the hall till pretty much everyone else has left. And then you got a 45 minute to an hour drive back and then you got to hop, jump up for morning worship uh, the next morning. So you're just not used to being rested and being able to uh, sleep in was you know just it was amazing to be able to lay down and just watch the sun come up instead of rushing here and there uh was it, it was hard for my relatives of course definitely worldly relatives or really any of my relatives to just really appreciate that i hadn't been able to do any of those things for years sleeping in having quiet those things were uh just really precious to me and uh oh man i remember uh actually realizing that i had a choice of what i wanted to eat and not just i mean there's a menu and after a while i just stopped looking at the menu and you know other than fried chicken day and a few choice meals that you know you'd have circled on the menu other than that, you know, it, you just go to dinner and whatever they had was whatever they had. You know, uh, used to having a choice other than the commissary. And in, in that Walk Hill commissary, there was only a few things in the commissary. They didn't like there was a lot of different choices in the commissary even. So for me uh, to actually have a choice of uh, what I wanted to eat was just you know, amazing to me. And I remember wanting shrimp every night because I think I had forgotten what shrimp even tasted like. And that was one of my favorite foods. Uh, of course, when I went to Bethel and uh, I don't remember having that for years and years and years. So shrimp was one of the things that I wanted for dinner all the time. Of course, steak, different things like that. Uh, just basic things too, like just some pizza and some wings or something, you know, uh, and some Kool Aid or just something, just simple things that I just remember not even having a choice uh, to go and eat. Uh, really, because I mean, you, I mean, Walk Hill isn't like Brooklyn. There, there isn't a place where you can just go and get things like that. Little things, Cheetos. Oh, I remember getting some Cheetos and I remember like thinking I have literally not had Cheetos and I don't remember how long. And I'm just sitting in my room and I had an entire bag of Cheetos to myself. I mean, just the joy of little things. I mean, that's why I'm saying you can only only really compare it to someone that's just got out of prison to be able to enjoy little everyday things that, uh, people normally have whenever they want it and for me going to a movie was like the equivalent of going to disney world because i, I like movies and uh i remember of course when i was at bethel i hadn't seen anything i didn't watch tv at bethel uh i didn't go to movies at bethel i literally was years behind i had years and years worth of movies that i had to get caught up on so going to the movie theater or going to at the time like a blockbuster there aren't very many blockbusters around now but at the time blockbuster was like a real it, it was like going to disney world me running around blockbuster like wow i haven't seen any of these movies and uh going to work and actually getting paid to work that that was a concept that that believe it or not took me a while to just for it really to sink in i'm actually getting paid to work and then when i work overtime the more i work the more i'm getting re, you know uh 
paid uh, in return. So, I mean, to, to people are complaining at work and I'm thinking, what are you complaining for? We're actually getting paid to do what we're doing. You know what I mean? I'm not accustomed to doing and getting that. And I hadn't gotten that for years. And uh, again, I was doing some some Bible reading. And uh, a scripture came to mind because it's, it's really hard. You know, you leave Bethel and you hadn't had any educational training. And why haven't you had any educational training? Well, because you just trust what the governing body tells you uh, without really doing any real research uh, on your own. Of course, you can't say, well, I read what they gave me to read. That's not doing research. Uh, and I'm not saying that to upset anybody. I, I'm just trying to speak the truth. I'm not trying to upset anybody. But Romans chapter 3 Verse 23, I'm reading out of the New World's translation. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, very simple scripture. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, it doesn't say everyone except the governing body or people at Bethel. All have fallen short uh, of the glory of God. God. So that means you don't put people in the place of God or put people in a place where you don't even question anything that they say. So why then, if according to scripture, these people are just as imperfect as, as you, I, or anyone, why wouldn't you do some research if they tell you not to go to college or tell you uh, not to take a blood transfusion? Why wouldn't you say, wait a minute, I'm going to do some research and based off my research, I'll, I'll get back to you or show me the scripture where it says don't go to college. There is no scripture that says that. So why wouldn't you question it? You're not questioning God because it says they've fallen short of the glory of God. It's not like murmuring against Moses. Moses spoke directly to God. The governing body does not. They don't speak directly to God. Uh... There's no angel bringing them messages, They're not speaking directly to Christ Jesus. They're just doing research just like any of us could do. So it doesn't hurt if they're doing research and giving us information for us to double check what they're giving us. How does that hurt anything? So, again... My opinion is to go to school, get your education, then go out and preach. And then at least you have something to fall back on. Uh, if everything else or, you know, if you go to Bethel and, and they decide not to keep you there, whatever the case may be, then you have a plan B. So. Sitting and waiting for the end of the world is not wise to do right now. With the way the economy is, it's not wise to just sit and wait for the end of the world. You need to uh, be prepared, uh, get an education, go to school, uh, be prepared to raise a family. We don't know that the end of the world will come in the next year or so. So in order to be prepared, there's skills that we need to have. Even Bethel needs to use certain skills. So that scripture uh, came up in my Bible reading. I never thought of it that way. When you said all that have fallen short, you think all, but you're not thinking governing body and, and, and the organization. No, really, all have fallen short. So double check, do your research. Uh, it doesn't hurt to do some research and double check. And uh, this is ex-Walkill Bethelite signing out.